Disco Elysium, back in Revachol with a shaved Harrier Dubois. And dapper as always, Kim Kitsuragi. All right, I don't even remember what I was doing. Um, <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, let's take a look at the tasks. Ah, Ruby, that's right. Right, right, right. I think I'd like to do some of the other stuff first, though. Um, I believe Ruby is probably, you know, main quest stuff. Let's go talk to the dice maker. Seems like a good idea. Actually, I'd forgotten about that. Thanks, tasks list. You are helpful. Um, yeah, I already did that. Okay. Took me a second to remember what that was exactly. Uh, oh yeah. I forgot. I'm gonna need this. Forgot it was dark in here. So... Let's try this real quick. on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Like a smooth draw, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good afternoon. Fortress accident on Rue de Saint-Gueslaine. This is East Inslindian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? Good. Please repeat the password. Good. I've unlocked the production schedule. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Really? She just used the same password? <laughs> yeah. I thought that that was a little humorous as well. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? That's all for now. Thank you. Thank you. And goodbye. Peace. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Print it. With a quiet determination, the printer starts printing, a piece of paper unfolding like a handheld fan. A black crisscross of letters covers its surface. It's a project report written by the lead producer, Andrew Andy Schott about Whirl Untethered, a radio game developed by Studio Fortress Accident. The first few pages give an overview of the capital and workforce, while the rest of it seems to be a production schedule. Um... Money. In its short time of existence, Fortress Accident SCA managed to burn through truly insane amounts of money. The first tranche of seed financing brought in 150,000 rear, but then came the delays. Eventually, the damage reached 400,000 rear with only half of the game finished. 400,000 rear? Yo, my yo, these guys knew how to party. <laughs> Uh, where'd they get all this money? Let's just say it was a real adventure for their Egaunian investor. Hmm. Uh, skim through it. The production schedule depicts their glorious descent into bankruptcy. What happened? It was impossible not to fail. The project was too large and no amount of money could satiate the ever-expanding ambitions of the development team. Hmm. They tried to make a 4 million real game with 400,000 in their bank account. They thought they could bridge the gap with pure willpower 
and imagination. They couldn't. Oh, so they were done in by their own ambition. No. Even then, success remained within an ever-narrowing margin of possibility that, despite everything, never entirely disappeared. That is, until they discovered the Valley of the Heads. What's that? At the 11th hour, the lead designer, Jimsk-born Suliswav Jalisa, decided that what Wural Untethered needed was a secret mystical location at the extreme edge of the map. This place was to be the Valley of the Heads, where the heads of all the headless constructs could be found. The player would have been able to choose a head for their headless party member, and each head would have been voiced on air by a professional actor. Um, how many heads? So many. The last count, there were approximately 10,000 heads for 10,000 headless men, all of which could be endlessly recombined. It's pretty bad, so that's what did them in. Well, yeah, that and the catastrophic data loss. This must be the anomaly Suna mentioned in the church log. On the nature of the data loss, there's ominously little information in the production log. It comes at the very end where things get fuzzy and dark, where tables and numbers seem to vanish into an eerie nothingness before the Egaunian investors pulled the plug. What is clear is that one day an unidentified numeric anomaly occurred on the East Insulindian Lintel Front just as the Wirral Untethered project was being compiled that day. Hmm. And the anomaly caused all the data to get lost in the air? When the project was returned, it was completely blank. The team spent weeks on the phone with Lintel, the service provider, but despite their diagnostics, they could never produce a satisfactory explanation or pay for the loss. Um, they lost the whole game and wouldn't even pay for it? Always read the terms of service. <laughs> I suppose so. And let's face it, they didn't have any money left for a legal action. True enough. Wasn't there a backup? Mysteriously enough, it seems that the off-site copy happened to be on-site when the catastrophic data loss occurred. Mm -hmm. It was the lead programmer's responsibility to oversee weekly maintenance of the off-site copy and, well, keep it off-site. An explanatory note from the lead programmer has been attached. What's it say? S. Lukinen Kilda, the lead programmer of Fortress Accident. The off-site copy was on-site because there was no off-site anymore. Not for me, not after eight months of crunch. I didn't have a home anymore, so I started keeping it in the basement in the ice bear refrigerator near where I went to sleep. It was perfectly safe there. The temperature conditions were optimal. Not very convincing, is it? Her former colleagues would agree with you. Anything else from Suna? The production schedule ends with a few random notes that seem to be added sometime later. Read the notes. Four months later, by an unknown author. I am the only one left and it's gotten rather damp here. A few other businesses have gone under too. Slipstream switched to making skis and the hairdressers just left, cursing Martinez. They're right, though. Something's seriously wrong with this place. Martinez. All of it. Still haven't got an answer from Lintel about what happened. All I could get were the physical coordinates of the error on the East Insulindian front on that day. Since the computation happened on air, I reckoned it had to coincide with an actually existing location. 
I have compared the coordinates to a map of Revershot West. Turns out it's only 800 meters from here. The address is Sombrune 1147. I am going there to look this thing in the eye. Hmm. So that must have been Suna as well. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. What do you want, Kim? Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? It's obvious this is what remains of Suna's radio game studio fortress accident. Yes, I got that. What I meant was, what were they trying to achieve with this damn game? What were their ambitions? Because this here looks rather advanced. This is way above your tiny little policeman head. Uh, I don't know, I'm not an artist. Okay, well, I think... It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it. Make it work on radio computers. Utter madness, he thinks. As a compliment. And this was a role-playing game? Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Wii World board game, with heat death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. How are they planning to do that? Through call-in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the Game Master frequency that listens in on the smaller calling stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. Wow. Indeed, it's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it company. Let's finish it. It's too late for that, I'm afraid. Okay, let's keep moving. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? Uh, leave. I can actually almost pass this. That's crazy. Um, I think all I gotta do is get drunk and uh, maybe put some shiver stuff on if I have any, which I should. Shivers. Mm hmm. Let's drink some alcohol. Um. 
Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? Found the two millimeter hole in the world. A gust of cold air sweeps through the chimney. The stones and minerals on the shelves rattle as though agitated. For a moment, it almost feels as though you're outside the building, exposed to the atmosphere. Um... This is still just a theory, but hear me out. I think I know why your business hasn't failed. Didn't we already talk about this? It's because you're not in the same building as the others. This isn't technically the doomed commercial area. What are you talking about? My address is exactly the same. Rue de Sanguilan 10. No, the old coal plant that used to be here was subsumed into the new venture. Its ruins swallowed up, yet it has a different address in the heart of the city. No, this used to be a coal plant. You're in a chimney of another building. This doesn't make any sense. Are you saying my business was spared because of a technicality? Where is this coming from? It is a different address in the heart of the city. And what? Does it mean that I'm safe from failure? No one's really ever safe from the failure. She starts laughing, her fingers trying to rub away the exhaustion from her face. What? Do you know what this is? A uh, lucky charm, a Semenese ward. It's a mourning ring. I made this when my first company failed. It was a small jewelry shop right here in the East Delta Commerce Center, built with the little I inherited from my parents. I drove it into the ground within a year. I didn't have what you would call a viable business plan. Why are you telling me this? It wasn't just a jewelry shop either. I always thought that it was just the world that you were supposed to try again and again until you finally succeed. And now you're telling me what? That it was all because I didn't run my little shops and ventures from a dump inside an abandoned chimney? Yes, coincidence is all that safeguards us. Yeah. Or maybe... It's the entire world that's cursed. It's such a precarious place. Nothing ever works out the way you want it. That's why people like role-playing games. You can be whoever you want to be, you can try again. Still, there is something inherently violent even about dice rolls. It's like every time you cast a die, something disappears. Some alternative ending or an entirely different world. But anyway, thanks for sharing your theories, officer. Hmm. Uh, I'd like to order a die from you. Of course. Tell me what you have in mind. I'm looking for something to help with my work. I think I have just the right one for you. Police colors. Because I'm a police officer, right? Not the most original I know. But sometimes the obvious choice is obvious because it's best. Here, catch. They're a gift for me. 
How nice. A beautiful woman tossing you a gift. Whatever you do, don't overthink it. <laughs> um. Catch him. You overthink it. Your hands can't agree what to do and the two dice drop to the floor and scatter in opposite directions, like pearls from a broken string. The blue one disappears down the pit in the center of the room. Hmm. Ah, down the drain, like your career. I apologize, officer. That comment was unnecessary. Pick up the red die. That one is made of bloodstone with a lapis lazuli inlay. The other one was the inverse. There were a set, you see, but now the set is broken. It's a shame. They might have brought you luck. You definitely need luck in Martinez. <laughs> yeah, you're not kidding. Now, was there anything else? That'll do. Um, I wonder if I can go find the, um... The other one. Probably not. A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice, or several voices, talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. The echo is so prominent, it's impossible to discern what the voices are saying, or what's producing them. What are you doing? Uh, I hear someone talking. Wait, really? Maybe it's coming from behind those safety curtains we saw upstairs. Mm-hmm. It's weird how, like, the dialogue here just doesn't fit. I mean, I'm just looking for the, uh, the die, but I guess you can't find it. Uh, let's see. Put back on my cravat. Um, I think that was the only thing I had swapped out. Look at the map tab in the journal to see which white checks have opened. I can do the mirror check again. Interesting. What's the Andre check? I'm not even sure. my uh, thing back. Not even sure if you can get it back. I, I would expect that you can. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Remove the production schedule. The filament slides out of its glowing nest. Thing is worth 50 real. I don't want to just leave it there. Should be able to sell it now.
Yeah, I hate those hand-eye coordination checks. They are pretty rough. Like, several times in this game, people toss you things and you, uh, you can try to catch them. But, uh, yeah. Good luck. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with it. Sure. Let me have a look. Mmm... Pockets. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Here you go, Chief. Uh, I think that'll do it. Another time, perhaps. Alright, what do we want to do now? Why isn't this crossed out? Hmm, right. I could talk to Morel. Find a tape with a melody for Egghead. Hmm. Did I not finish the uh, dice maker thing? All around you, rain falls on the great city of Rivershaw. Rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters, washing the filth away. Winter's grip on the city is loosening. The spring thaw is here. What now? Humid. Your coat shields you from the rain while the city shivers around you. Um, what's in the west? Sheets of rain over the water, a flight of stairs leading into the ocean, wave after wave washing the coast of Martinez with its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet beyond the Bay of Revachol. Ghosts rise into the sky. Your hair is an oily mess flecked with ash from neighboring coal plants. Smoke stacks rise somewhere in the distance. Hmm. Interesting. I don't really want to go through all of these, though. But it is cool that it like zooms out far so that you can get a good view of the area. This rain will not let up anytime soon. At least we are dressed for it. Let's keep moving. Indeed. Guess I'm gonna need my flashlight again. I mean, I thought I did everything that I could with, um, the dice maker. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? Curse. You mean the curse that I'm spared of because I live outside its immediate reach? Hmm. Yes, well, about that. I'm listening. There's a two millimeter hole in reality located in a church on the other side of the canal. I think it may be related to Pale. Excuse me? A two millimeter hole in reality? This can't be true. I'm afraid it is, ma'am. Sona Lucan and Kill, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident, made the discovery. Sona is involved in this? So it's even worse than I thought. It's not just the commercial area that's cursed, it's the entire world. 
She looks outside the window where daylight has filled the yard. What? No, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say that the entire world is doomed. Just Martinez? In any case, thank you for stopping by. It's good to have an answer, even if I can't claim to understand it fully. Yeah, same here. Okay, now we're done. Let's go speak with uh, Morel. Great to see you again, officer. My wife can't wait to thank you. Go on, talk to her. Oh, sweetie, I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. I was just on my way while I was working the case. Here, I want to give you a small token of my gratitude. It's a tie. Mask in origin. The pin is an antique. Quite special. The little silvery knob holding the tie together feels warm in your hand. It's in the shape of an avian skull with eight eyes. You could ask her about this when you get the time. It's probably a cryptid, but the phasmid, of course, is more important. Hmm. Maybe you could convince her to tell you about some cool cryptids? There's really no point in manipulating anyone. She'd be only too pleased to tell you about her work. Go on and ask. Hey, Lena, I'd like to hear about some of the uh, cryptids you've studied. Could you just tell me about a couple of them? Oh, I'd be delighted. Truth be told, I could really use the company too. One cryptid, not a couple. <laughs> one. This one turned into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. Okay, Kim. Just one little cryptid. Promise. He nods and assumes a waiting posture. Cryptids, cryptids. Let's hear about all the interesting cryptids. Ooh, tough choice there. Hmm. Is this bird a cryptid? No. It's the cryptid. Wow. The cryptid? Oh, yes. Okay, what is this bird? The eight-eyed teratorn, the largest flying avian ever discovered with a wingspan of 11.5 meters. It was thought to have gone extinct 3,500 years ago. Some even doubted the fossils were real. A mutation, they said. Until... Mutation? <laughs> All of evolution is a mutation. Until? Until it was sighted by renowned Gottwaldian explorer and naturalist Uwe Plattenkalk in 21. This renown seems a bit dubious. Your own catalogue comes up completely empty, but, of course, you are not all-knowing. I need to hear about this sighting. 
It happened on a botanical expedition into the vast and unexplored Oamrau Canyon in southeast Ilmara. Dr. Plottenkalk got separated from his group during a sandstorm. And? Alone in the blasted desert heat, the doctor wandered eastward, where man hasn't stepped foot in over a thousand years since the fall of Pericarnassus. He was lost without any navigation equipment and desperately low on water. After a day or two, he noticed a bird high in the noon sky. A great black bird, it seemed gargantuan. Every now and then, the bird would dive down to feed on an animal carcass somewhere on the horizon. But by the time Uva got there, the Teratorn had taken off already, and the carcass was picked clean. This happened many times. Eat the bird. Uva. It's the only way to survive. I understand. He started hunting it. Yes, a bird that big has a lot of blood in it, and he was dying of thirst. For many days, Dr. Platzenkalk followed the Teratorn, until they reached a great canyon wall, where the bird finally landed to rest. The professor climbed up there with a rock in his hand. He found the bird sleeping with his head tucked under its wing, a great black pile of feathers on the perch. So he approached, slowly squeezing the rock in his fist. Then the Teratorn suddenly looked at him. He could see it had eight eyes, four on either side of its skull, like a spider. And the man couldn't move. He was paralyzed, frozen into place with the rock in his hand. Whatever he did, he could not get closer to the bird. Why? The bird was controlling his mind. It kept him from approaching. He could step back, but every time he stepped forward, paralysis. Uva spent three days trying until the bird flew away. Hold on. How did he survive to tell the story? The eight-eyed Teratorn was indifferent to him, as long as he didn't get closer than two steps. It even let him feed on some carcasses up there and the two unfertilized eggs it left behind. An eight-eyed, mind-controlling bird? Hell yeah. Absolutely, sweetie. Cryptozoologists have been tracing it ever since, but Wamrao is vast, mysterious, and holds many secrets. Modern radar telemetry shows great promise. We will confirm this one by the end of the decade, latest. This one I liked. Not only does it have eight eyes and is a living fossil and the largest bird ever to live, it also does mind control. He's sincere. He likes the audacity of it. So that was the last anyone saw of it? Sadly, yes, but there are numerous reports of eight-eyed bird skulls from Il Mara. And then there's the striking resemblance to the Periconassian Imperial Eagle, an ancient heraldic symbol that is hard to pass off as coincidence. The Imperial Eagle, too, had eight eyes. Not really. It's just stylization. The way they drew eyes. It's not a zoological drawing. Very, very hard. This one's very famous. Everyone knows it. 
people will be looking at that tie on you and thinking that man is into cryptids. So what else do you want to know? This has been educational. Sadly, we need to discuss something else. Of course, dear. That'll do. <laughs> Nothing like the gratitude of a good woman. Now then, what can I do for you? He tries to play it cool, remain professorial, but inside, this man is itching for some news on those traps. So he checked all the traps. Good. Okay. And? And one of them was empty. Completely empty? Yes, there was nothing inside the trap. No locusts, no phasmid. No locusts? No phasmid either? That's not ideal, but... It just means the Insulindian phasmid is even more clever than we thought. She's engaging in a well-known self-deception called motivated reasoning. You should correct them. Of course, more clever. Yes, the Phantasmodea picked off the locust and escaped. This is good news, though we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps, make them more secure. Another trip to the reeds. It's not very scientific to reason backward from a conclusion you want to be true. I appreciate your concern, officer. But please leave this to the experts. Unless you have an alternative hypothesis you'd like to venture. You're jabbing at the soft underbelly of his psyche. He realizes he's gotten defensive. Actually, no. Excuse me for getting emotional. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now, and brought some great news too. My gratitude, and the gratitude of the Societe Cryptozoologique de Ravachol, is yours. Heartfelt gratitude. But does it feel like closure? What really happened? Thank you, it's an honor. We should probably return to our main investigation here. This has been refreshing, but... Helping cryptozoologists isn't really a priority for our organization, is it? The lieutenant looks out the window, impatiently. Damn it, lieutenant. Have you no intellectual curiosity? <laughs> Insulted Morel. Did I insult him? Um, I'll get going. Have anything that has interfacing? I don't think so. I think the only thing I have is my gloves. Uh, where's that tie that I got? Interesting. Pain threshold. Inland Empire and Volition. Uh. Who's this person? Oh, this is, uh, yeah. I guess I can talk to him. Always a pleasure to see an officer of the law. What's up, Gary? I mean, officers. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. Right then. Um, oh. 
Have you seen Ruby? Hello. Lena and I were just discussing the design of the new trap. I can't ask him about it now. All right. What cryptids precisely? I usually discuss these things with specialists, so I don't know what. We would have to discuss. He wants to say, but decides against it, since you've offered to help. Uh, which cryptid did you almost catch? You said before that you almost caught one. A willow person. It's a long story. One non-specialists would find rather dull. Willow people? Not at all. What are willow people? They're not people, really. Some argue they aren't really animals. As they seem to have evolved directly from trees. They're very, very thin, almost flat in fact, and can camouflage themselves easily, wrapping themselves around trees and blending in with the tree bark. In that way, they're not too dissimilar from the phasmid we're looking for here. Wait, so I may have seen these willow people without knowing it? You probably have. How'd you almost catch a willow person? Gary and I painted an entire grove's worth of trees in slow drying paints. It was a bright lavender colour. I was hoping one of the willow people would get paint on it and not be able to camouflage itself. After waiting in hiding for hours, I saw a figure slip from one of the trees, a lavender shadow dashing through the grove. And then? I chased it with a knit. Not very elegant. You can't be elegant in the field. And, well, it was faster than me. A lavender shadow. I know you think we were snacking on funny mushrooms. It's easier to mock someone than to admit that the world might be more interesting than you've imagined. Furthermore, I'm not saying it was a confirmed sighting. I'm painfully aware of what goes into verifying such things. There is a serious possibility that I saw a squirrel or a trick of the light. I am my own harshest critic. He makes it a real point here to sound falsifiable. And Lena's sighting of the phasmid, is that? Confirmed. It's 100% verified and meets all the standards of an authentic cryptid sighting. The woman nods thoughtfully, while her hands smooth over the plaid covering her knees. There is some uncertainty in that motion, no? Smoothing the fabric like that, as if looking for some kind of confirmation. That'll do. By all means. <coughs> Goodbye. Um, hmm. I don't know if I can do this with Kim with me. Um, or if I can even still enter the room. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your clean-shaven face adorned with the expression. You're still not accustomed to it. Hmm. Um, okay. Am I still... Yep, I still have the buff from alcohol. Got a lot of good electrochemistry stuff in here. I 
All right, let's give it a shot. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your clean-shaven face adorned with the expression. You're still not accustomed to it. Mm. I wouldn't mind adding a point to interfacing, honestly. do that actually no man it's more efficient if I attempt to do the um, the morel check before I put a point into interfacing So let's do that. What? Oh, it it put it put oh, that's really irritating. It put the point into interfacing before I I did not um How do I how do I back out of it? Like it um it said press X to confirm. I did not press X, but it confirmed it. That's irritating. Well, that's really annoying. Fine. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your clean-shaven face adorned with the expression. You're still not accustomed to it. Mm, do I have my chain cutters equipped? I'm actually not even sure. I do. It's annoying. The I don't. Mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your clean-shaven face adorned with the expression. You're still not accustomed to it. I don't know why it it confirmed my skill point when I did not confirm it, but okay. The chain cutters slip out of your hands as you attempt to twist the faucet into place. Well, you know one thing for sure. You've probably never been a plumber. Excellent. Okay. Put these back on. I think that's it. Oh, these also have electrochemistry. Would be nice if there were a thing to automatically equip all of your clothing to give you a better chance at doing this stuff. But I maybe that's not the way that they intend for you to play the game, I don't know. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your clean shaven face adorned with the expression. All right. You're still not accustomed to it. Let's try it. Still not happening. <laughs> it won't come off that easy. It's unreal, dude. How many 50% checks am I going to fail? Jeez. Uh, okay. Great. Um... Is 
Is that it? I think so. Then let's go ahead and try the uh, check on Morel, I guess. Why not? Hello. Lena and I were just discussing the design of the new trap. Alternative theory. You have your suspicions, <laughs> but nothing you can form to a viable explanation. How many 50% am I going to fail in a row? It's ridiculous. Uh-huh. Maybe it was a different cryptid who took the bugs? A different cryptid? Oh, sweetie. Maybe you should stick to human detective work. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. Man. So irritating. I see you found yourself a little something from my wardrobe. Not bad. Not bad at all. What oh. brings you here? Thank you. You can keep it. I don't mind. I can appreciate beauty when I see it. I wasn't really planning on giving it back anyway. Uh, thanks. It's like I'm carrying a piece of you with me at all times. Is it now? <laughs> well, enjoy it. Bye-bye, gendarme. Oh, man. This, this game, I just... It's one thing I hate about playing games that have a significant luck factor, because I have ordinarily awful luck. I got luck. I got really lucky early on when I nailed the five percent uh, check, but I, I used up all my luck there. I, I will never get that lucky again. What do you want? What is it? Yep, habitually chilling next to the radiator. Gotcha. The already familiar cold touch of plastic welcomes you as you pick up the handset. Do it. Your fingers run over the dial pad. Zero, zero, 005. That's the dialing code for Revachol. 4952. And a moment of hesitation before entering the final numbers. 993. Nine, calling. Calling. Still calling. Then... Video Ravishal, 24 hour video rental. We run 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lummy, how may I help you? The voice of a youngster on the other end sounds as enthusiastic as that of a man walking towards the gallows. What is this place? Video Ravishal, it's a 24 hour video rental. We run 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lummy. Uh. Do you know me? No. Why did I call you? Maybe you called to extend your rental period? Do you need to extend your rental period? My name is Harrier Dubois. Do you have anything on my name? Let me fire up the machine. Dubois. Dubois. Here we are. You haven't rented anything in five years. But you still have a copy of Blue Ocean Hell from November 46. Whoa, not a fun film, that one. What kind of film is that? Uh, it's not an easy watch. After the death of his daughter and subsequent divorce, Ziemsk immigrant Igidius Wojcik tries to come to terms with the onset of dementia. Hmm. Wow. No wonder no one's been missing it. Still, it would be great if you could return it to us. We're on the corner of Voyager and Maine. On the corner of Voyager and Maine. A large neon sign hangs on the side of a building. Video Revachol, 24 hours. It's raining and there is almost no traffic on the street. A woman's footprints in the mud lead away from the front door. Tiny heels tiptoeing down the road. Beautiful steps, light-footed with a lifetime ahead of them. You look up and the air seems to grow darker. The call is terminated by the other party. You're left with the discomforting sound 
of the disconnect tone. Okay, interesting, I guess. Uh, any other checks that we can do? Not really. The precarious world. Temporary research bonus, all red checks fail. Wow. Okay. Uh, what do I want to do now? I kind of want to, um... No, get... Please, please get down the stairs. Oh my god, can you just... Oh, jeez. I kind of want to, um... Keep checking the locations on the coast. There should be two more, I think. I found one of them. The boardwalk and... Um... The island for bullet traces, right? Oh. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's fine, I guess. Let's do it. I should be able to travel, right? Yes. Uh, go. Boardwalk. There we go. No, not that. I don't think it's this. There's some tear, an empty cigarette package, and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Mmm, tear. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter is all you find. No, there's more in there. Livis strawberry liquor. Plus some pills in the bottles, too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. A tragedy. Um, hmm. I don't understand. Check boardwalk for bullet traces. Oh, maybe up here? Um, maybe not. Hmm, here? No. There's like some stairs over there, but I don't know how to get. I feel like I should definitely be able to get in there, yes? Maybe there's some way to, like, get around the other side. Oh, 
Well, I don't know. It's very confusing. It's like impossible to know where you can path also. Maybe I should use my uh, mouse for this. Hmm. light vanishes inside the concrete slit. The structure goes deep under the earth. What's in there? Maybe it's just a storm drain for the sewer. Kim, any idea what's down there? No idea. Could be connected to one of the buildings around here. Think we might find Ruby down there? We might find her down somewhere. There's an old storm drain system beneath Martinez that's mostly collapsed. Revachol sewage system has been built and rebuilt four or five times now. Hmm. In conclusion, she could be under any building. But not in there. <sighs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Yell ho. There's no echo. And no answer. Finish thought. Um. Well, I don't see any way to even proceed in there. Otherwise, I would definitely check it out. I can't even really see what it is. Yep. Does the island that they're talking about refer to... I think you might need a boat to get there. I think I vaguely recall someone talking about a boat. Uh, well, there's a boat. Who this? I'll just keep the core de leche in the channel, if that's okay. It's too shallow near the pier. Hmm. Hi, ma'am. And it's a jetty, by the way. Of course. Jetty. I prefer a good jetty to a pier any day. Jet, jet, jetty. Something about the way she says it makes you want to sing. Jetty, jet, jetty, de jetty. Oh, jetty, oh, jetty. It's good to see you here, detectives. I only just arrived myself. What brings you here, madame? Nothing, really. I've had my eye on this jetty for weeks now, so I decided to investigate it personally. This cluster of buildings isn't on any of the official maps, as far as I can tell. That. And she's also keeping an eye on you. Uh, have you been spying on us? Spying has such a negative connotation. 
I did track your progress along the coast, however, and decided I would be better able to assist you from here. Then there's the matter of that little scamp in old lady clothes. She threatened to paint the cordillate she read. Like blood, you see. Well, I like it the way it is. White. What is this? Destruction of property? Hooliganism? Elder abuse? That's just Cindy being Cindy. You can ignore. It's just as well. Lillian and I are getting on much better. For one, she appreciates the concept of rent. So how do you like it here? Hmm. How do I like it? Water drips down eaves of Etonite. The jetty below her feet creaks to the tune. The smell of salt and dog shit in the background. It's pornographically poor, the street has no name, all the men are dead or missing. And is that the carcass of a motor carriage over there? Pay no attention to that. I'm surprised that woman hasn't put me to the sword yet. Maybe she will. You should ask your questions while you can. Dark eyes survey the coast leading up to Martinez. Dull grey metal rests in her scabbard. A sword. The wind is too loud for her to hear. Fortunately for you, madame, the RCM is on the scene. All right. Politics time. Let's react. Real men. Real politics. Real thoughts in your head. Try not to be scared. This is just how the real city looks. Oh, I'm not frightened, officer. I'd never... Above you, there forms a quilt of alto cumulus clouds, twisting into each other. The wind tugs and stretches them over the bay. Their cloud shadows slide over the ruins of Revachol West. Wherever they pass, the temperature drops slightly, but perceptibly. Have I told you how they discovered this place? This island? No, the Insul Indian, Isola. Uh, no, you haven't told me how they found it. Well, your condition has left you no worse off than most of these people. The literacy rate is around 45% west of the river. Fifty years of occupation have left these people in an oblivion of poverty. 45% is around where I operate. Things are getting better, though. Uh, yeah. I knew you would sympathize. <laughs> Most Revacholians will never know what this place means. Our home. This island of matter. Or why they were ferried over in the first place. Remind me to tell you one day. For now, how can I assist you in this new location? Um... Of course. I hear you have singled out a suspect and are in pursuit. This is cause for cautious optimism. How can I help you at this juncture? Everard? Hmm. She's not even asking you anything. It's so easy to just say. He asked me to deliver an envelope. Sounds like he has you running errands, detective. A well-established dominance ritual. Where did he have you deliver it? Here. Here? Oh no. What does that bloated hellbat want with my little cinder block town? No, don't tell me. I don't want to know what he has in store for this place. Probably a statue. It's a statue, right? A giant statue of him. Or better yet, his twin brother. Practically the same thing, but makes him seem less like a psychopath.
He wants to build a youth center here for the children of Martinez. A youth center with Edgar Clare's statue on top of it? The humidity crawls under your skin. Your eyes track her gaze, past the net picker, toward the concrete square of the nameless village off the coast of Martinez. Go ahead. Help him. Make it so. I have no power to stop him. <laughs> what size boots do you wear, madam? What? 35, I think. Why? I have mutants' feet. Very small. The prints are hers. You're quite fond of this village, aren't you? I should be. In my youth, I had a brief dalliance here in Martinez. He was an older man with impossibly broad shoulders. He's probably dead by now. Even his shack is long gone. Not that it matters. These buildings are all carbon copies of one another. You've been to Martinez before? Yes. I was slumming it with some girlfriends of mine. We had boats and... Don't hold it against me. My paramour certainly did not. Sounds like you miss those times. Not overly so. It's not like this was the only place we visited. Me and my girlfriends from Azon with our shiny boats. Like reavers. We told ourselves we were the worst thing to happen to the coast since the Coalition landed in 08. Imagine. If you say so. I'm over-radiated, Harry. I do silly things sometimes. Out of pale related illness. Like sail over here. The moral of the story is, do not spend 22 days a year in pale transit. Don't waste your 20 slumming it with your stupid friends. And don't deliver Everard Clare's mail. Are you satisfied, detective? What else can you tell me about your mail delivery quest for Everard? Do you think it will improve the place? She's pointing it quite hard in there. Feels like a knife. You would prefer something else, not a youth center? First, there won't be a youth center. Whatever he's told you or the residents, it'll be something horrific, perhaps even worse than a statue. So, yes, I do. Like what? A fishery. I've been speaking with Lillian here. She gave me the idea. The infrastructure is all here, and with my connections. Sadly, it's just one of the million things I'll never get round to. I just have to accept that I'll never be the rich candy girl who goes around solving people's problems with money. So you said you can't buy the place? Yes. I'm sad I'll never have the time, Detective. I've always wanted a dilapidating fishing village. She is more defensive about it than usual. Full of ghosts and ancient memories. Has this errand yielded you any information? Something else. Of course, Detective. You can always drop by later, should something come up. Now, what else can I do for you? Your boat. Well, technically speaking, I'm not on it right now. Hmm. That'll do. Good. That's about it, I think. What about you? The waves are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. Simmer down. Simmer down, bastards. <laughs> Why does she care about the waves so much? What is it with you and those waves? What is it with waves and fishermen? We need to be out there with them. Fishing, making a living. So I asked them to accommodate me. But until that happens, I can try to assist you the best I can. So, what will it be, officer? 
Um, I was asked to get your signature. For you? Hmm. This says by signing, I agree to living with construction noise. <laughs> what exactly is the union building? Everard's planning to turn some of the village into a youth center. What a nice idea. Wouldn't have thought that. She sounds incredulous about the niceness of the idea. Thought what exactly? That Everard and the Union have nice plans for anything. I thought they only cared about themselves. Well, I guess Union members have children too. And those members have a vote when electing the head of the local chapter. Uh, on second thought, don't sign the papers. Aye, if you say so. Probably better that way. I mean, who likes construction noise? Be seeing you. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do that or not. Um, I don't like Everett Claire, so... It's not likely. So... How do I check the island, and how do I check the boardwalk, and how do I get inside the Feld building? Many things that I don't understand. Yeah, the pathing in this area is just miserable, honestly. Like, it's just so hard to really get anywhere. Figure out where you can go, where you can't go. Not a fan. I think I tried to go in there and it was locked. Um, hold on, let me do this. Let me use my mouse. I think I know... I think I get it. So somehow there's a way to get under this area and then you can come up through there is what I'm guessing. Of course I have no idea how to do that though. It might be related to that building that I can't get into. Oh, did I have the option to ask her about Ruby? Maybe I should try to do that. Let me look at something real quick. hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. Hmm, yeah. Red check on that one. Alright, well, I have no idea. Um...
Let's go talk to um, the people and see if they know anything about Ruby. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Have you seen a red-haired woman named Ruby around this around the coast? Nay, no, I haven't seen anyone lately. Mm, okay, but do you know who I'm talking about? This is my little cinder block town. I know what goes on around here. She's being evasive. She knows something. Clearly. There was a murder in Martinez. She might be a suspect. We would appreciate your help. Would you now? I know how this world works. And it doesn't work when people tell on each other. This isn't about the Union, you know. You don't have to worry about retaliation. Ah, I should have known. This is yet another Union mess. I'm not afraid of them, you know. We are not in the habit of being afraid around here. I see. You know something, but you've decided not to tell us. There's not much to tell. People come and go. Now, was there something else? I see, ma'am. I hope you don't mind if we look around anyway. You should look around your shack. Maybe she's rented it out to others too. Goodbye. I mean, I'm pretty sure I've looked around it pretty well, but okay. Ah. Uh. On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and nick. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see your reflection in it. The expression fixed to your clean-shaven face. You're still not accustomed to it. I, uh, I wonder if you have a higher chance of stopping it from here because there's no, there's no fog on the mirror, but probably not. As you look at the floorboards in this corner of the shack, it's clear one of them isn't quite level with the others. The edge of a floorboard next to it looks scratched. Move the board aside. Hollow space underneath the floorboards is dark and damp. You can barely make out the mixture of sand and sawdust below. What's in here? Nothing particular catches your eye. Looks like more reeds. There might be something hidden inside the sand though. Search the sand and sawdust. You stick your hand in and start combing through the sand. Dry, not like outside. Fine dust. And then, something hard wrapped in paper. My gun? A gun? What is it? A small cylindrical object. You pull it out. A bullet. Hmm. A 9mm bullet, to be exact. Fit for all muzzle loaders of that caliber. A bullet. Interesting. The floorboard doesn't care. But maybe the washerwoman does. You have enough to confront her with. Uh, okay. Weird. Weird and a little contrived, but we'll do it. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Why was there a bullet under the floorboards of your shack? Damn that girl. And without anger, a long and harsh life has taught her not to buckle under pressure. A bullet? You didn't put it there, did you? She did. Gone and hid things in there? 
She's usually a good tenant, and not a stupid one either. You rented the room to her? Yes. I let my room to that ruby girl. As I've done before when she's been in trouble or just looking for solitude. I've made it clear. We welcome all kinds of people here. When was this? She came last Friday, left on Monday in a hurry. What has she gotten herself into, that girl? That's for the police to find out. Right there. Please answer each question to the best of your ability. I'm sure we have a few. You said she left on Monday? Yes, early with the dogs, around 8 o'clock, I think. She probably heard the Lieutenant's Kanema drive by, and it woke her up, just like it did you. Kim, she must have heard your kinema. Yes. That is a downside of having a 130 kilowatt engine. It lets the bad guys know when you are coming. Is the room exactly as she left it? I cleaned it, like I always do. Was there anything else there? No. The truth, sire. Indeed. What is she like? She's good company. Knows how to talk to an old woman. At my age, you don't get a lot of quality conversation. So I really appreciate that about her. Did she talk to you much during her last day? No, she was mostly silent this time. Kept to herself. What do you mean? She tried not to let it show. But I could tell she hadn't come to fish. Usually she likes to cross a few lines. But this time, she mostly stayed in her room. Why do you think she left the bullet there? How would I know? She's a gruff one, but not violent. She doesn't go around toting a gun. I heard she was a heavy drinker with anger issues. You ever witnessed that kind of behavior? Nothing of the sort. Sure, she was no stranger to the bottle. She fit in that way. But I only knew her to have a beer on the beach while watching the sunset. She isn't what you'd call a drunk. Even offered me some from time to time. Said it was part of the communal life. But I never saw her lose control of herself. The way some people do. Some people. she have any technical equipment with her, like radio stuff? Not that I knew of. Though she was into nice music. She once showed me a few mixtape milieu she'd made. Although I guess she was pretty handy with the mechanical and technical stuff. Even fixed the heater in the shack. You should be thankful for that. Where'd she go? I don't know. Further up the coast. She tried to leave quietly, but the hinges on that door screeched like a cat in heat. Woke me up. I heard her rushing in those heavy boots, heading up north. It's a peninsula. She might be trapped. You'll never find her, you know. She knows the coast like the back of her hand. You only just arrived. Aha, but I am a trained detective. I wouldn't worry about that, ma'am. We are persistent. Indeed. Further up the coast we go, then. Are you sure you would rather stay here? Get a nice cozy fire going in the heater? Seems like a better idea to me. The Feld Electric Mural. You feel like you should go look at it again. Step closer this time. Goodbye. One thing, officer. If you do find her, please go easy on her. She's a good girl, whatever she's gotten herself mixed up in. No promises.
You see a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R&D. A slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Now, only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says, Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Step closer. Above the mural, a collapsed roof, broken windows set in walls that are cracking and will soon also fall, and the coastal breeze rustling and sighing in the remains of the edifice. Feld Electrical. How ironic. All these dark rooms. Feld Electrical. You only know them as a small company that makes ink cartridges. Looks like they used to be big. There's something in the wind. Sometimes the only way to go forward is to fail first. Could Ruby be in there? In there? She could. Or she could be in the identical room over there. Or in that boat shack. In that church tower, maybe. Oh, not in the church tower. Why single out this one building? Pretty good. Even though you're sure you succeeded, all is quiet. There is no cold hand brushing against your forehead. No rustle in the reeds. The wind has died down. The ruin in front of you is silent as a tomb. What was I even attempting to do here? Trying to talk to the wind. The city, whatever you thought would happen, did not. And now you're just standing there with your hands fallen to your side. Is trying to talk to the city something you've done before? Is it in your secret repertoire? A trick for when you're out of ideas? She could be anywhere. How do we find her? How do we? I was really hoping she'd be in the village. <sighs> okay. She's probably north of the village, and this place is a peninsula. We already scanned most of the outdoor areas on our wild cryptid hunt, so we have an understanding of the geography, at least. Vaguely. And then there's the church. We've already searched that and can rule it out. I know it doesn't feel like progress, but exclusion is a step too. Anyway, we do it the old-fashioned way, sector by sector. Go over the whole peninsula, ask the locals, enter the places where we can enter first, like we did in the village. And if that fails, if we don't find her? Then, if we're desperate, we can look where we can't enter. Bankers, Tom Drainage, this place, I'm sure it won't come to that. Walk the coast, the old boardwalk, the reeds. You can always come back here and talk to the wind again. Look where it already got you. Hmm. Okay. Um. Hmm. I mean, I can see something highlighted in there, so clearly she's in there, Kim. Or something's in there. the backyard wall check again oh no I cannot um Ha <laughs> 
Other than that, keep searching the coast. Okay. talk to her again. The waves are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. Simmer down. Simmer down, bastards. I'm looking for someone else, actually. Oh? Who? Looking for a suspect who might have stayed in this neighborhood. Okay. When did this person stay here? Very recently, over the past few days, she might have arrived on Friday. Oh. I've been out on the sea for most of the past week. The weather's been good for fishing, so I usually start at four in the morning. Really? Yes, that's the optimal time. Got to make the most of the calm. I've been sleeping like a corpse after. The sea really takes its toll. Now I'm just waiting for the wind to settle, to get out there again. Sorry I couldn't help you out. Maybe I can help you find someone else. Uh, that's it. Well, how can I assist you then, officer? Be seeing you. Guess we can try to talk to the kids. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. Have you seen any bad people around? What bad people? I don't think questioning four-year-olds without their parents present is going to crack the case. Kim, relax. Then we're definitely doing it. You must be Lillian's twins. This one doesn't say anything. Kicking the concrete with his worn-out sneaker. Lily's our mom. Goodbye. What's up, boys? The legend! He's back! And firstly, I got smokes and piss and a little speed to spice things up. Uh, goodbye. Tequila Sunset. You seen a red-haired woman named Ruby around here lately? Can't really remember seeing any women after losing my keys. It's a touchy topic. He hasn't got laid in ages. He really has no idea who this Ruby is, sire. Mm-hmm. Damn cool, Abigail. Women. Abigail? Abigail, where are you? Mm-hmm. Damn cool, Abigail. Very helpful. Uh, man.
Guess I could try asking the people in the church. The kids. on your mind nothing I mean she was outside welcome back there we go have you seen a red-haired woman around no liar just no it's pretty desolate here I only hear the dogs bark at night and see the shadows move down the coast long shadows short shadows quiet shadows of local children loud shadows drunks and also a shadow made of sticks. You breathe on your hands for warmth. Considering what we're trying to do here, this doesn't look like a good sign. Superstition. We can turn the grim desolation into a fun dance club and thus also help turn this hellhole around. Mm-hmm. Guess we can try talking to these two who've been out here for days. Hello again. Looking for a suspect. Have you seen anyone suspicious around? No, I'm afraid I can't help you with this one, officer. It's just a regular day off for me and Mikael here. So you haven't seen anyone around? No, I'm sorry. As I said, this is just a day off. We just arrived anyway. He's telling the truth. He hasn't seen anyone. <clears throat> All right, listen to the wind again. The once bright mural towers above you, saying, Feld Electrical, R and D. Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Suddenly, there's a sigh carried on the molecules around you, moving, flowing from high pressure to low pressure, like that of a woman emptying her lungs. She wraps the collapsing stone box in front of you in her breath, flowing through it. Where does it go? In through the collapsed roof, flowing down a concrete staircase to the basement, sweeping away footprints in the dust on the stairs, and then the beach below the boardwalk, its winding tunnels, a whisper away. What is happening? She's down there. I think she's down there below this building. Okay, why? We've looked everywhere else. Right. How do we get in there? The doors were on the collapsed side of this building. They're gone, basically. There's a ladder next to the sign. Perhaps we can climb it, enter through the roof? Perhaps you can climb them. We are not climbing anything. I'm 43 years old, and I plan to live to see 70. There has to be a way to use brute force. Climbing sounds unsafe. Brute force is safe. Look around and find something to break if the ladder fails. I mean, I tried to 
Ah. So you had to do that to access the ladder. I noticed that ladder like a gajillion years ago. An old pipe peeks out from beneath the rotten boards of the boardwalk. Could this be an alternative path into the fell building? A building like this must have multiple doors serving various functions. Perhaps a basement access. Your eyes slowly begin to adjust to the darkness inside the drainage pipe. The lieutenant looks over your shoulder. What's in there? An ordinary drainage pipe. Darkness. And? As your eyes adjust, you see some trash. Crumpled up newspapers. Cigarette butts. Someone has half-heartedly spray-painted skulls on the right side. And? And? And nothing. Broken glass from bottles thrown against the walls of the pipe. A syringe. Could we get into the fell building through this pipe? Given that this isn't a martial arts thriller, it's highly unlikely, and not without risk to our health either. However, the pipe suggests there may be an entrance to the basement around... He means the pipe must be coming from somewhere in the building. And it's right here, a maintenance door. Uh huh. Uh huh. Don't I have, like, super low physical instrument for 24 hours? Yes. <laughs> perfect. Just perfect. Right then, uh... <laughs> I didn't realize that gives you more, um, more, like, pain threshold as well. I mean, I guess it makes sense, but I didn't realize. Behind the pipe, the maintenance door, rusted shut and half sunken in sand. Mm, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get that. Um, we can try it though, I guess. Behind the pipe, the maintenance door, rusted shut and half sunken in sand. You and the lieutenant lean all your weight into pushing the doors apart, but you're not quite synchronizing your efforts. They slam shut again before you can enter. Mm hmm Let's take a breather and try this again later. It's very tough. <laughs> yeah. Looks like the ladder it is. A rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. Some of the rungs are missing. Yeah, that doesn't look good at all. Assess the situation. The distances between the remaining rungs are rather wide. You'd have to use the mounting brackets. However, they seem corroded and the peeling rust is razor sharp. In addition, 
The first rung is going to be tough to reach. It's what, three meters above the ground? And you're 180? One eighty seems about right. Not to mention that the roof is collapsing and the wind gets pretty brutal up there. Dismounting from the ladder is going to be hard. Perhaps if you were to not climb the ladder. Instead, what if you were to reconceptualize climbing the ladder? Yeah, because falling from that height seems, well, splat. So don't do that. Just, you know. What if I don't climb? What if I just teleport? Teleportation is not a thing. Come on, Kim, where's your adventurous spirit? This really has nothing to do with adventure. We are dealing with basic physics here. It won't hurt to try. Oh yes, it could hurt. A lot. He is restraining himself from using a parental tone with you right now. Okay, so we need Savoir Fair for this. I don't think I have much of that. <laughs> okay, sure. Rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. Um, I mean, how hard is it? Just teleport to the roof, dude. On second thought, maybe teleportation isn't a thing. Why? Because you're just standing there squeezing your buttocks and nothing is happening. Don't say the stupid thing. The lieutenant looks at you with that. I know you're thinking the stupid thing. Look. As you grow tired of clenching your buttocks and give up. Another 60% check failed. Excellent. I mean, that's not even that difficult of a one to, to pass, I don't think, but um, yeah. Great. Well, I mean, we've uh, failed both the checks that we need to get in there. Thirteen hours on that. Two hours on that. Um... Hmm. What else do we got? I don't know. Not sure what else we can really do. What? It keeps saying that I can do the backyard wall conceptualization at first. Guess we just wander around and see what else we can get into. Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. Hmm.
Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? I found your guard booth. Yes, the Debardeur's union pays me to stand vigil during the night. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and money is tight. You must have seen something on the night of the murder. Your booth looks right into the yard. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. Why were you on leave? It's a private matter. Nothing to do with your investigation. You see, officer, René is the kind of man would rather die than admit he needs medical assistance or, God forbid, sick it. A real man's man is just gonna ride it out. I'm fine, goddammit. Mind your own business. <sighs> it's nothing. Just got to cut back on coffee. It's his heart. So who was working your shift that night? No one. The bus has been on man since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. No one has been guarding the container yard since last Monday. Yes. It's... It's not actually an issue. I mean... Look, officer. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, René. Monsieur Claire had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. So it doesn't matter if you're there or not. The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. Evrard created this job for René because he knows the Royal Carabiner's pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. A decorated kingsman collecting there reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His words. There's absolutely nothing wrong with tear collecting. It's my side thing, too. Oh, I didn't mean to imply there's something wrong with that. I do it, too. Everyone does it. It's an excellent side thing. Yes, yes, yes. Can we conclude the topic of my guard booth now? Goodbye. Yes, yes. Uh, like I said, it would be up anyway, so might as well keep an eye out. It keeps my senses sharp. I have really outdone myself. This is divine. Yes, that's what you need, Gaston. More padding on that fat ass of yours. I hope your heart gives out. René, tsk, tsk, it's a little pleasure. Life doesn't need to be a, um, a struggle. Hello, officer. How might I be of assistance on this fine day? Hmm. Goodbye. Um, let me check something real quick. owner, stuck in the interminable traffic jam. The smell of cigarettes and perfume welcomes you. The cabin inside is plastered with old movie posters. Actresses smile from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front, 
and a toolbox tucked under the driver's seat. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. There's something odd about the passenger seat. The seating fabric has been pulled tight over the lower side of the seat where the toolbox should be. Peel off the cover on the passenger seat. Voila, a stack of neatly folded papers has been stashed behind the seating fabric. You see three maps depicting a large metropolitan area. It's Revachon. Some of its routes and highways have been outlined with a pen. Bonne prise. Fold open the topmost map. This large map displays the elevated motorway called 881. The intake leading to Martinez is marked with a blue X. There's another X on the off-ramp at a place called the Old South. Toll booths at the intakes are marked with a circle. It looks like there are scant few ways of getting onto the elevated motorway that runs over Jamrock. And this person knows them all. There, hundreds of thousands of motor carriages roar on the 881, high above the mess of brown and red roofs that is Jamrock. The commuters don't even look down. The world ceases to exist outside the windshield. Fold open the second map. This municipal map from the 30s displays a complex system of storm sewers underneath a sub-district called the Pox. Old military hospital, right adjacent to the 41st precinct. Wind, wind rips through the empty hallways of the once great military hospital. Now, just a ruin under an overgrown park. Beneath the hospital, great sewer tunnels hum and vibrate with life of their own. The third map. The final map displays a labyrinth of service tunnels left over from the construction of Motorway 881. A few routes have been marked with a pen, where the tunnels and sewers surface near the eminent domain and a traffic island in central Jamrock by the lake. These service tunnels were probably used during the construction of the foundation beneath the motorway. Despite the cold, figures move about cloaked in shadow their breath escaping in white clouds that fade into the darkness. Wherever you look, the night gives cover to her messengers. Where are they going? They travel from eminent domain to perdition and onto the main, over the River Esperance, on Route 881 to the Old South. The exit ramp is supposed to be shut down, but there's much activity. The road spreads like the tentacles of a great octopus. Looks like the smugglers have infiltrated the road network belonging to East Motor Tract. The smugglers have infiltrated the motor tract. So it would seem. The RCM patrols most of these auxiliary roads, though apparently not all of them. Where does the contraband end up? Hard to say. This distribution network looks certainly large, yet still vague enough. It doesn't reveal much about the Besmerti behind it. Besmerti, that sounds vaguely familiar. The Besmerti is a Revacholian crime syndicate. They see themselves as the inheritors of the 14 Revacholian Indo tribes, but really they're just violent gangs vying for control on the west side of Revachol. With cool names like La Puta Madre and Aura Masta, it's a dark parody. Hmm. Who do you think is behind this? It's definitely not the Union. They just do some logistics. This operation has spread everywhere in Jamrock. If it's that widespread, then Madre remains the most likely suspect. Here's bad news. There have been attempts at a serious investigation before, but they haven't ended well for those involved.
Lieutenant Kitsuragi is a brave man for saying Madre's name without the winces and whispers that usually accompany it. Especially bad news for cops who may have something in their past they don't even know is there. I turn the stack of papers underneath the seat. Best not to disturb the scene. I'll have forensics go over the lorry and pick this up later. The stack of maps looks just like before, barely noticeable. The movie stars look silently by, and the pull-out toolbox has a rubber handle, worn from years of use. You close the rusty old lorry door. Hmm. Car. That was somewhat fruitful, I suppose. I wonder if now that we've seen those maps, um, we can find the location of the sewers more easily. Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? That weasel I visited turns out he has one hell of a colonial mug collection. Yeah. The janitor who gave me the key to his apartment said the guy's a bit of an asshole. Yes, his mug collection certainly represented antiquated social values. Like I said before, I don't know much about this weasel, but the bossman said he's a real piece of work. Thanks for helping out, friend. Goodbye. Oh my god, select the stairs, come on. Jeez, <laughs> so hard sometimes. For the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Hmm. You got anything for rhetoric? Really? You're back before the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems. I guess I can smoke also. Let's turn this uh, playthrough into, uh, or this this specific video, into a demonstration of how many 50% checks I can fail. You're back before the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Another 58% check. Let's see it. Why oh, what do you know? Trying to open a door with rhetoric. Because getting physical wasn't an option. Because what wasn't an option? Using my body over my wits. Now is not the time to get philosophical, detective. You can do that after hours. Shut up, Kim. Color me shocked. Another 58% check failed. Crazy. Oh, 
hey, mister. I knew you'd be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And lots of folk really did keep coming back. In the future, can we keep this greeting shorter? Sure, mister. Absolutely. I'm always willing to help out nice fellows such as yourself. Hmm. I guess there's nothing. Mr. Dubois, every worker, member of the board, how can I help you today? Murder. Most certainly, Harry. Nothing brightens my day like brainstorming these things with you. Nothing. By all means, Harry. What's on your mind? Um... Mailed the signatures you asked me to get. No, you didn't. <laughs> I know the mailman, Harry. I know everyone and everything that happens in this town, and I know there's no letter in that mailbox yet. Mm -hmm. Just like I know you'll get it done. Once you stop horsing around, let me know when it's done. Yeah, I figured that's what would happen, even though that's completely unrealistic. By all means, Harry. Goodbye. What's on your mind? Yeah, I don't like that this game, like... It can't make up its mind about whether or not it wants to be a role-playing game or not. It's like, here you have a lot of choice. There's a lot of things you can do. Oh, but not, but not that, the, not that many things. That's too many things. Back, back up the train a little bit. I don't like that aspect to the game. Um. It would also be nice if there were a fast travel point to and from this area. And if you could fast travel from anywhere and lots of other things. Can you please just get out of the door? Jeez. Alright. Here we go. Stairs again. Oh wow. First try. I'm very impressed. Alright, let's take another stroll down the coast, see if there's anything new now that we've seen the maps. I doubt it, but you never know. Nothing in here.
Um, let's see if this is any different. Behind the pipe, the maintenance. Nope. Looks like nothing. I don't know what to do then. Um, there's not really much to do. Other than wait until... Something else happens so that I can either get more... Uh, skill points. Or... I don't know, something else in the world changes. An old door worn by elements. Yeah, nothing too exciting here. It's interesting, the game changed from having too many things to do to having really nothing to do. Find a tape with a melody for Egghead. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know where that is. Name Ruby. La, Luby. Ra, Ra Luby. My mom tells me I'm a big girl, but she doesn't know that I can't say Earl. Or like, sometimes I can, but then oh, er, Uller. Kids. Um, are you Lillian's daughter? Little Lily, you know my mom? Yes, we met earlier. That's nice. My mom is great. She's never angry or anything. Hmm, goodbye. Bye! Other, this wasn't in here before. Franco Nigerian boots. Perception. Hmm. Interesting. Waves are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. Simmer down. Simmer down, bastards. Uh, goodbye.
Well, that was a weird glitch. Titus. The copper NATO is back. What do you want? Uh, Ruby. Yeah. What? No, that's it. <sighs> Gart. Hey, was there something you needed? Well, well. Bringing him that new bird sure made a difference in his attitude. Uh. Goodbye. Again? I can't believe this shit. Mm hmm. Yes? What is it? Goodbye. The man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Uh, let's try talking to Classier, I guess. It's been a little bit since we've spoken to her. Just as you look at the flowers, a gust of wind raises them from the roof, picking them up in the air. Hmm. Sure. The wind brushes them off the roof. They're gone. How many 58% checks am I going to fail? <laughs> It's incredible. The same small, heavy door. No lock. So stupid. I was just thinking what a nice evening it is for taking part in a murder investigation. Uh, why do I feel like you've won here? I really don't know, sir. I certainly don't feel like I've won. I feel like shit, sir. All the time. You're right. How well could it have turned out for me? I mean... The wet wind, heavy with brine and industrial pollution from the stacks nearby, ruffles her hair. I'm stuck in Martinez just like all of us. I've been up here for... I don't know how long now. I like to call this my rooftop containment facility. What are you contained for then? For my sins, of course. The long-standing sins of a bad, frivolous person. For destroying my first love. For working for bad people. The list goes on and on. That's all. She nods, slowly, carefully even. There is suddenly a strange glint in her eyes. Not malicious, but dangerous. Um... Maybe I can do the shivers check. Uh... 
Um, okay. I was just thinking what a nice evening it is for taking part in a murder investigation. 42%. Not bad. A little bit under, a little bit less than the uh, 58% that we've had and failed a million times. Let's try it. Nothing happens. There is a mass of droplets above the planetary body, colorless, merging into one another. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The sky is low and cold. You hear the distant murmur of motor connections somewhere south of here. That is all. So, officer. Lies. Lies. I... Yes, we demand she be punished for deceiving us. We demand her anxiety. We demand her fear. Mmm, that's all for now. She slowly, slowly lights another cigarette and steadies her breath, as if in the presence of some tiger. Your room? Yeah. Goodbye. All right. Pretty uneventful. This game seems to alternate between being very cool and interesting and being very uh, slow and disappointing, I would say. It has very high highs, but also a significant amount of lows. Uh, I do need to get some um, health healing stuff. guess we can do that. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint-Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Okay, here. I hope say okay, here. 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 I hope Saint-Baptiste makes you feel better or something. Good shopping experience there. See you around. Oh, God. Guess we could talk to this guy. Right to work! Right to work! Shame on you! Um... I think you may be able to help me decide for some tattoos. Don't think so. It was on your colonel. Wordless, he takes the photo and looks at it. Gray eyes dart back and forth on the glossy surface. His face is unmoving. Hard as a stone, but beneath it. Fucking loincloths. Really did him in. You tell me what the tattoo means. What it means. In what must have been Semini. I can tell you what this one means. Only one. You want to hear what happened here? Yes. Our colonel is deep in the bush here. Deep in the fucking bush. In Benital. 41. Monsoon season. He's on a reconnaissance mission. Benital is one of the inhabited islands of the Semenese archipelago near the Pale. 
Covered in jungle, it was anchor point for the Seminese nationalists in the proxy war held on the islander's territory. He spent a month behind enemy lines, scouting kept villages. Nothing but fucking bugs and snakes for fun. Men are getting restless. There's talk of switching employers. With some strange emotion, this is about to get really graphic. Last moment to back off. Our boy, he's only a captain then, but he knows how these men think. If they don't see action soon, At dawn, he comes upon two kips, breeding in the bushes by the river. Or maybe they weren't breeding. Maybe they were just making eyes at each other. I like to think they were breeding. We shot the boy. He was useless, but the girl, she was nice. A little fat, you know, but not too old. She was quite the entertainment, for the week she lasted, expired in the hands of Sarge Mason. The kind of guy who'd make Chief there shit his pants and cry like a bitch. God. <laughs> Mason couldn't let go, cut the tits off her cold body, and fucking ate them. <laughs> Said primitive spirits were watching over him now. Drowned in a creek a week later, spirits my ass. Something stirs in your stomach. You were there? No, I was somewhere else. That's just a guess as to what this one little star on his belly might mean. I'm just a bouncer. Can I have the back? Go ahead. All right now. Free commerce! Keep the goods flowing! On the photo in your hands, the dead man's skin is studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them, litter in his dead skin. Goodbye. Well, we did manage to get another skill point. That's always good. So... Um... Uh, I guess we go for Savoir Faire. Oh, you have to press Y to revert. That's lame, though. If you go to another page, it automatically accepts it. That's not how it should work. Yeah, you have to press Y to revert. Okay. Mm-hmm. I 
don't think we have anything else that improves savoir faire. Oh yeah, we have this. Okay. Let's try it. What are you talking about? We can't teleport, Kim. We just did teleport. You see that? Standing in front of the whirling rags and all of a sudden just materializes us in front of the church. It's crazy. The rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. 72%. Yes. Teleportation is completely not a thing. Perhaps if you were to instead... Climb the ladder with your eyes closed. This way is less scary. Grab the first rung. It doesn't crumble in your hand, as one might expect. In fact, it doesn't even bend. The second. Your fingers slip from the rung. Officer, be careful. Officer! Brace yourself. The ladder gleams arrogantly with what remains of its metallic luster as you hit the barrel and tumble onto the ground. Enough of that now, officer. There has got to be a better, more age-appropriate way in. I'm afraid there isn't, Kim. Hear that? You're old. That's why you can't do it. Old and feeble. A letdown. A failure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. 72% failed. Very impressive. starts to make you wonder about the RNG in this game like I don't know is it is it actually fair I don't know I mean I suppose technically even if it were 97% I could fail but uh, yeah uh, okay oh now I have no idea what to do um, I'm guessing I won't be able to um, sit on a bench and wait for time to pass. Because the only thing I can think to do uh, requires Kim to not be in my party. I can think of several things to try to do that require Kim to not be in my party. Could have also tried taking speed, I guess. Apparently speed improves your motoric skill. Don't really want to do that though. There's anything over here. Hmm. Ah, this is the tree. Okay. The Hawthorne tree. On Rue de Songe's lane, bronze-colored ribbons of magnetic tape are caught in its branches, fluttering in the breeze. Just like promised, you've stood here for what seems like eons, guzzling the sickly fumes of lorries and carriages. Mm, 
Okay. Do I have anything to improve interfacing? I don't think so, but... Not looking good. The gnarled hawthorn tree on Rue de Sanges Lane. A wintry breeze blows by, making the magnetic tape flutter. The multi tool is truly multi. Let's try it. 58%. Can we fail another one? With slow and deliberate motions, pulling, bending, and unraveling, you manage to extricate the magnetic tape from the branches. Excellent. Finally. It curls up into a mess inside your pocket. If only you could find a way to re-spool it, so that you could hear what's on the tape. Maybe Roy from the pawn shop can help you with this. What's the tape for? You know damn well what it's for, Kim. for Egghead. I promise to make his Van Eyck's jam hit a bit harder. Maybe this tape can help. How? It's broken and unspooled. Do you think your new buddy knows how to fix it? I think at least one of the ravers would know how to fix a broken tape if they want to set up a nightclub. You could also get it fixed at the pawn shop across the street. We shouldn't waste our time. Good idea. He might have the tools. The tape projector in the pawn shop uses similar tape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes this game is just like, oh, no, no, yeah, we, we couldn't figure out a way to point you in the right direction, so we'll just tell you how to do it. <laughs> it's like, all right, dude. Yeah, the pawn shop, I got it. hundred different ways the game tells me it's the pawn shop. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Fix. You mean re-spool it? Yeah, I do, but... Great, could you do it please? This is important, I need to be able to play this tape for someone. But I'm not some Mr. Fix-It. I'm a pawnbroker. If you want to pawn the tape, sure. Although it looks pretty... worthless. Just explain why you need this so much. He's bound to understand. Worthless? It's not worthless, Roy. This could be the next big thing for the local dance music scene. Huh? What do you mean? You know that old church down the coast? Yes. What about it? I helped some young ravers turn this place into a nightclub, and they play these weird neo-disco beats there. Is it any good? The music, I mean. No, that's the thing. You, you can't believe how unbelievably thin the beat is. There's nothing to it. No bass. It just goes zoop, 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 zoop. But this tape could make it hardcore. Man, you're really invested in this. Okay, I'll help you out. It's going to take a moment, though. So just sit back and relax. Take your time. You take some time to look around the store. The play of visuals all around the pawn shop is mesmerizing. Suddenly, Roy turns back to you with a reel of tape in his hand and coughs. You know these visuals would look super cool in the church. Hey, those visuals you got here would uh, look pretty great in the church. Yeah, I bet they would. All those lights in a massive church hall. A sanctuary filled with hand-picked positive photons. There would be no room for sadness in such a place. It's a brilliant vision. 
but... I rather like it here, too. So yeah, I'm not giving you my projector. This tape is all I can do for you and your friend's nightclub project. There's no way to turn this around, I'm afraid. I want to see what happens if you pick the other one. Yeah, a sanctuary filled with hand-picked positive photons. There would be no room for sadness in such a place. It's a brilliant vision. You and me, we could make all this become true. Mankind needs this. Yeah, man. No. I rather like this place happy, too. You know, where I work. This tape is all I can do for you and your friend's nightclub project. There's no way to turn this around, I'm afraid. Well, thanks for the help. Yeah, my pleasure. I'll do what I can for True Passion Project. Just try not to use this tape for negative photon emissions. Take responsibility. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's go up here so that we can teleport or fast travel. The surrounding blaze of the electric lights makes the white on blue police livery of the motor carriage seem beautifully ominous. Why am I even thinking about this? Do something important? Something murder related? There's always something important. Doesn't mean you can't take a moment to admire this piece of machinery. This is a Caprice Kanema. The Caprice Motor Corps follow up to their highly successful workhorse, Caprice 40, and the answer to the Lums racing breed, Ferv series. With its air-cooled, rear-mounted 12-cylinder compression ignition engine, driving the rear wheels through a four-speed manual gearbox, the Kanema is able to reach 100 kilometers per hour in 13.5 seconds and go on to a top speed of 180 kilometers an hour. Won't it roll over at the first sharp corner? The high center of balance is offset by a large battery bank mounted at the bottom of the cabin, feeding all the auxiliary systems and making the Kanema effectively a mobile power plant. Turn your attention to the motor carriage itself. Even at a standstill, the unibody Caprice Kanema looks sleek and dynamic. The cabin is tilted frontward to give it a more aggressive, hunched look. Someone has waxed it recently. That machine really puts the loco back in locomotion. Very cool. Mm -hmm. You want to take a closer look? Fine machine. Yes, an extraordinary machine. It's nice and all, but why so modest? Put some zing into it. Flare it up. Slam it down. Helium headlights would improve the range and quality of the visual field a lot. It's a bit girly right now. Fit it with some proper off-road components. Ever think about switching to helium headlights? Actually, I have a pair at home. Just haven't gotten around to fitting them yet. I need to lay some wiring for the ballast first. If we ever get this case solved, uh, maybe we can do it together. Maybe. Yes, definitely maybe. And means no. Let's move.
Good morning! Yeah! Harder car! It's not morning, it's evening. Found this reel of tape. Maybe you can use it to hard up Ike's jam. Yeah! Remix time! Tape goes here, into deck B. A hand on his ear. He listens to the audio through his headphones and shouts. Wow! Did you get this from Arno himself? No, I actually found it tangled up in a hawthorn tree. Listen, I'm just going to show it to you. Ready? Ready. Now, if only we had the beat for the full assault, it would be unbelievably hyper. What is this? It's good. How did you guys do that? You're right, it's uncanny how well it all goes together. Something else must be going on here. Yes. But what if Van Ake based his remix on some forgotten local melody, uh, like a folk song, and you just found the original piece that inspired him to create this jam? That would explain why it fits so well. Nah, to me it sounds like classic Van Ake. I don't think he needs any inspiration from folk songs. Maybe he lives in Martinez and just threw away part of his song because he thought it wasn't good enough? I think it's just happenstance. Chaos in action. Contingencies of our limited existence. That and Egghead's fantastic talent. Noid's right. Egghead's technical talent is the key. No, this is definitely part of the same song. Something cut from it. It fits too well. Cell's right, Van Eck must live around here. It's definitely his creation. Be how it may, if it fits, it fits! Bring up the volume! What about the bass? Do you have any ideas for that? Yeah, I remember. You said it needs more bass. I think you might know the answer. What if we used that crazy sound assault from Suna's experiment, but contained it, tamed it, made it pulse? Oh! Oh! But how? What about that compressor Andre was setting up to achieve some sort of parallel processing? Don't be too hard on yourself if you don't figure it out. I think the jam is already pretty ultra. But it could be hyper, hyper hardcore! <laughs> All right, goodbye again. Um, eight percent, huh? Yeah, that's a tough one. Oh, not now. This area really runs poorly with all the lights and everything. We have another thought thing. Arno Van Eck. So we get a research bonus, that's cool. Hmm. 
That would be interesting. How close are we to a level? Uh, not at all, apparently. Okay. Back to having no idea what to do. The rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. Okay. <clears throat> There's nothing else to do with the traps at this time. They're all just lying around, gathering dust and rainwater. Right. I forgot about this area. I don't think there's anything here, though. Head with the beat. This may take a while. It keeps, like, randomly highlighting things that I can't do, but it thinks that I can do for a split second. Maybe we can try the, um, the empathy check.
Uh, it doesn't seem like it. I don't think this is going to be quite enough empathy. Welcome back. 17%, huh? Sure. The device feels light. An angular Omicron logo adorns the yellow plastic cover. Underneath, you see a reel of tape rolling. You put the device back on the floor. <laughs> Goodbye. Yes, what is it? Have you seen anyone suspicious, say a woman named Ruby? What? No, no one's suspicious around here. She has not seen her, sire. It is true. Goodbye. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we do now. I don't think the game is going to let me sit on a bench, but we can find out. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. There's nothing to do, Kim. What do you we want me to do? We can revisit the bench if you ever need to pass the time when Lieutenant Kitsuragi is gone. Maybe there's something inside the bookstore? Again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Goodbye. It's been a while since we've spoken to Kuno. Um. someone inside walk in from room to room whoever lives here must be back home whoever does that mean that Gary's not inside the whirling rags The dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito and bullet holes in the front. Oh, nice. But the documents inside the envelope still lack the required signatures. Not my problem. It's not going to be that easy. We need to dirty our hands with the signatures. I assume that's the goal here. <laughs> what? Kim, are you kidding me right now, dude? I, I honestly don't even know if it's like an option, if, if you have to do it or, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I really don't want to do anything that Everett Claire wants me to do. So Gary's not even home, then who's in Gary's house? Doesn't make any sense. Uh, 
Uh, where's my shirt? Put that back on. Everything else I think is fine. No, my shoes. There we go. All around you, the hisses and chirps of locusts fill the musky air. The earthen floor of the shack has been shaped into mounds of mud, dotted with little holes for windows. Like skyscrapers, spires of dirt and sand rising. Accommodations for their insectoid inhabitants. Well, detective, it appears you are on the way to solving the case. The missing locust case which is a subcase of the imaginary insect case. So at least that's going well. Uh, yes, we need to tell Morel about this immediately. Of course, I'll leave that to you. You seem to have a handle on the phasmid trap insect situation. And every other situation, Kim. Relax. Hello. Lena and I were just discussing the design of the new trap. I found the locusts in a nearby shack. A kid called Kuno's built a city of them. What the devil is a Kuno? Why would he be making a city of bugs? Oh, my dear Morel. You've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. I'll talk to the little gremlin and ask him to stop taking them. Oh, you've been such a dear to us. Please, let us know if the kids can stop hampering us. I have a feeling we're getting so close. Well, I see you've got all the help you need. I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play suzerainty, but no more field trips for me. After this is your last chance to talk to Gary. Really, Gary? We're getting somewhere here. I'd love to play suzerain tea, but... Lena, I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere. It was some kids. I know the little mutants around here. Leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it. Even if it's bugs. Or quarasses. Morel, it's been fun. Really. But I need a bath and I have deliveries to handle. When this tea is done... I gotta run. No, no. No need to apologize, Gary. You'd be more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on that game of Sue's rain tea today, though. We're gonna follow this through. The first man to break formation is always a blow to leadership. This is bigger than he lets on. Goodbye. Uh, I mean, if Gary's already there, I wonder who's in his house. Fuck this coon, okay? I know you took the locusts from the traps the cryptozoologist set up. Yeah. Kuno took the bugs. So what? Why steal locusts? Couldn't you find some other pets? They're not pets! Don't you know what locusts are? When they come out of the fucking sky! Fucking descend and shit! Stop! You stop! 
It's like their fucking night. Local city, night city, city of rage. There's a tug of war over the name of his fantastical city. It's almost too big for his imagination. The girl forces herself to watch again, the corners of her eyes twitching from discomfort. The lameness is causing her physical pain. The damage may be permanent. What are you, some kind of artist now? Maybe I am. Did he just say I? Kuno usually calls Kuno, Kuno. Hold on, did I hear you right? You said I. Kuno made Kuno. Kuno says whatever the fuck he wants. There are no rules here, pig. I fucking say I when I wanna. And Kuno when I wanna. Kuno's free. Kuno's free to fucking die, bitch. This is what he sometimes does when things get tense. That's great, Kuno. It's cool to make art. Oh my god, Kuno! He's gonna make you totally lame in, like, three seconds! Don't let him, Kuno! Yo, fuck you, see? Kuno can be what Kuno wants to be. Kuno's his own man. Kuno's free! Kuno made himself into Kuno. Kuno can make himself into anything. Kuno can make himself into a pig if he wants. Kuno can make himself into a f Kuno doesn't give a shit. Well, don't make yourself into a pig, Kuno. You'll have to take me away. In it, you hear snow melting, dripping from the eaves. Someone closing a window. Without a word, she disappears entirely behind the fence. For once, the boy is lost for words. He turns completely red now, with splotches of white beginning to appear across his face. Use this momentary confusion to take control of the situation. You've got him. Now convince him to leave the cryptozoologist's traps alone. I need you to stop taking locusts from the traps. The cryptozoologists are trying to find something very important. Those locusts are bait. I don't give a shit. I don't need the locusts anyway. Shit is all lame now. C was right. The girl's face appears again, above the fence. Just long enough to make eye contact with Kuno. She doesn't know whether to be glad because Kuno is finally convinced of the lameness, or more worried because of his continued use of the first person singular. Kuno is Kuno, not I. What's gonna happen to the locusts? Kuno's gonna let the fucking locusts die. What does the city of locusts mean? It don't mean anything. It's shit. Kuno just likes to focus. Kuno likes to concentrate on shit. Build shit when he's zipping hard. Fuck. Pig, you really shouldn't have fucked with Kuno City. Now it's all fucking lame. Alright, take it easy. The fuck are they trying to catch anyway? With the traps? The Insulindian Phasmid. Huh. He recognizes the name. You know what the Insulindian Phasmid is? Bitches think Kuno doesn't know shit. The fuck out of here. Kuno's tired of this shit. Fuck, does Kuno care? Kuno does Okay. Hello. 
Lena and I were just discussing the design of the new trap. I had a chat with this kid Kuno. He promised to stop stealing the locusts. So he was just a child. Thank you for telling us, sweetie. This is good news, right? It means we can try again. She acts chipper, but something's changed in her tone. A hidden worry. Something is secretly gnawing at her confidence. It's not this Kuno kid or the missing locust. It's something else. Yeah, you're right. We just need to restock the empty trap. Then we'll need to inspect the traps one more time. And then maybe we can. <coughs> he has a 38 degree fever. His resilience has given way. Darling, I told you to take it easy. You're getting sick. Maybe it's time to go home. You're right, you're right. We can come back next season, when it's warmer. That's just something people tell themselves when they fail. There won't be a next season. Not for this. Find a phasmid or admit defeat, people. We've come too far to quit. I'm going to restock the trap. Let's do this. We are getting really carried away with this, aren't we? Fine. It's better than having these people get pneumonia on the coast. But after this... He wants to see this tale through as much as you. Otherwise, he'd have stopped this already. But he cannot let it drag out after this. Really? It's too much, officer. <coughs> what Morel means is we're grateful for your help. Here's a fresh batch of locusts. They should slide right down the funnel. And thank you again. We will definitely mention you, should this lead to a discovery. I'm not talking co-discovery, of course, but... Uh... Wow. Co-discovery? You'd be famous. You'd show them all. This does tingle the pleasure center. This would show them all. We need to get you on that list of discoverers. No question about that. Goodbye. Well, at least we have something to do. <laughs> Box of low. You could just sell it. <laughs> um... Was there something here I could interact with that I have not interacted with? Oh, maybe this, yeah. Maybe I should do that also. Alright. Something to do, good. It's weird to me that this game just allows you to have nothing to do. Like, it's... It's possible that you cannot proceed. You're you're kind of like soft locked. The locusts aren't doing all too well. But they're still in there. This isn't the empty trap. That must have been another one. Oh, right. We only need to do the one. Might be faster to do this, maybe.
I can remember where it was. down here. Morel's trap stands empty, just like the boathouses around it. The reeds susurrate softly amidst the falling snow. Release the locusts into the empty trap. The locusts, dazed from being transported, slowly begin to acclimate to their new surroundings. They're not really going to get the chance to get comfortable here. Good. Now that's done. When do you think we will return to our impending apocalypse of a murder investigation? Uh, as soon as I can complete another Savoir Faire check, Kim. As soon as I can do that. Don't answer that. It was a rhetorical question. Hmm. He doesn't want to. But if there is one more cryptozoological runaround, he must force the investigation back on track. This better be it. Hello, dear. It's good to see a familiar face. I restocked the empty trap. Where's Morel? Thank you for doing that, dear. Morel still isn't feeling well. I convinced him to stay at Gary's to get some rest. I'm afraid the cold has really gotten to him. Only the hardcore players left, huh? Yes. Field work is a young person's game, as they say. Her voice is shaky. What is going on here? So, who's going to check the traps? Morel will eventually. Or we'll talk Gary into going back out, perhaps. The lieutenant stares at his shoe, caked in mud. He doesn't say anything. We'll take care of it. That really is too much, sweetie. Thank you for your dedication, but I can see you're coming down with a cough yourself. Nah, I'm good. Very strange. Why is she not letting you do this? It's like she's given up. Lena, what's wrong? You seem different. Different? How? Answering a question with a question, for example. Defensive isn't her usual style. You're on the back foot. I'm in doubt, sweetie. That's all. Everyone is now and then. About what? It's a... Uh, a strange feeling. I haven't really told this to anyone, but... You are a police officer. True. And when a police officer asks, you must answer. Do you ever wonder if some lovely story from your childhood is just that? A story? Or a dream? Seeing the Insulindian Phasmid was just a story I used to tell people. I didn't really think about whether it was real or not. But Morel told me you'd seen it. You also told me. 
Morel's so proud of it. He always tells everyone. <laughs> so you haven't seen it. I should arrest you for lying. <laughs> uh... Do you seem to really believe it happened? Doesn't that count for something? No, sweetie. There's more to it than that. Morel was so eager to believe my story was evidence of the Phasmid's existence that I'm some queen of the cryptozoologists. Bad. And for years, his belief made me believe too. But now, we're both getting old and he's still working himself sick out in those reeds looking for it. But what if I was just wrong? I think I was. The lieutenant opens his notebook, but doesn't write anything. He's hiding. These things are tough on him. Matters of love, not violence or deceit. <laughs> um, wow. First, tell her her marriage hasn't been a lie. All right, let's give it a shot. 60%. An acorn is not the same as the tree. That requires time, diligence, and care. Hell yeah. And I, I need something good here. All qualities these two seem to share in abundance. Wrong or not, your relationship with Morel isn't just about the Phasmid. But it is. We've spent years searching for the Phasmid, hunting it together. Without it, what are we? Just another pathetic old couple. If I hadn't led him down this path, he could have a steady job lecturing at a university. You know, this reminds you of the Perikonassian theory of love. In essence, love is a relay out of death generation by generation our love remains in our progeny lay some of that on her uh <laughs> you know the pericarnassians theorized that love was the key to immortality oh sweetie I don't think the Pericarnassians were thinking of people in my situation. I was a paraplegic before we met. He didn't know before I arrived, on our first date. If I weren't the queen of the cryptozoologists, if I didn't tell him that story... She has to swallow to relax her throat. It's keeping her from talking. He'd still be into you. That's not how these things work. Maybe. But then why do I not dare tell him? I I've wasted enough of your time with this drama. I really must stop talking about it lest I start crying and waste more of your time. What you have to know is the Insul Indian Phasmid probably does not exist. Let us fools chase our ghosts. There are a million better things to do with your life. Are oh, there? Some of the other things are pretty bad. Thing is, you're not sure you made it up either. I'm not sure of anything. Sometimes I still see it, you know, the real memory, not the memory of the memory, but it's so hard to tell the two apart. Either way, I should go. Poor Morel is running a fever and I need to get him home to Jamrock before we overstay our welcome with Gary. Sure you don't need help getting to Gary's? 
Oh no, thank you, but I can get there on my own. This old thing is gas powered. And then a taxi home. It's not so bad. <laughs> gas powered wheelchair? That's sick. Um you do that. I'll check the traps one more time. Really? Oh, sweetie. Please don't get stuck on a dream. Take it from me and Morel. No one can stop you from finding the phasmid. Exactly. Can I have your address just in case there's news? Okay. It's 1113 Tabernacle Road. Jamrock, but... It's been a pleasure, ma'am. Likewise, sweetie. Thank you for everything. Truly. Even though it turned out to be a... A waste of time. A lie. A fool's hope. Say her lips moving in silence. Like that, she drives off. The gas engine cutters quietly as she gets to the doors, then pushes them open. Outside, it's snowing. We should go to... Somewhere out there, a kilometre to the southeast, a gust of wind shakes the felled building, rattling dusty windows, beckoning with strange coldness, to ask the wind once more. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, where are we going, Kim? Where do you want to go? You tell me. How close is this to being done, by the way? Seven minutes. It's pretty close. Um... Okay, they're finally they're finally gone. I was gonna say they better not still be out here. The rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. The distance is between in addition, the first rung is going to be tough to re Okay, but still <laughs> the roof is collapsing and the wind gets pretty brutal up there. Dismounting from the ladder is going to be hard. Perhaps if what if you were to reconceptualize climbing the ladder? Okay. Nothing too exciting there. A few locusts trudge along the wall of the trap. The rest are piled in a heap in the corner, dead. No phasmid anywhere. The trap is filled with dead and dying locusts. Most of them aren't moving anymore. You still can't see a phasmid anywhere. Alright, so it's almost um, 9 o'clock, which is good news, because maybe in the next day I'll have more to do.
Or I could at least speak to Clossier without Kim. Just dead and dying locusts, and the slow swaying of surrounding reeds. Only one trap left. This is such a strange fast travel point, by the way. The trap is full of locusts, but they seem weak and unhealthy. A few lie on their backs with their legs twitching. Still, no phasmid. Mm -hmm. I can't get into this house. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I was asked to get your signature. Eh? What's this about? Come now, I can't read all this scribble. Tell me what it says. Uh, Everard wants to turn part of the village into a little youth center. Huh. I might be half blind, but it looks like part of the village is gonna be a street. The best part. The part we need to get out of our houses. Have you asked Lillian about this? I won't even consider signing till I know she's on board. Hmm. Goodbye. Um, was there something about the door being, like, hard to open or something? I feel like there has to be some other way that you can get into the building without being able to pass those checks. Why doesn't this place have, like, a front door that you can just walk into? Yeah, I don't know.
Coming back. That's good, officer. Keep browsing those clothes. Keep saving that economy. Save the economy? What are you talking about? Haven't you heard, officer? We've got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash. Keep it in circulation. Don't buy new things. Buy eco. Thanks for the advice. I'll try to be more economically conscious. Very cool. The economy thanks you, officer. You find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments made from weird polyester blends that make your body itch and sweat in all the wrong places. The box smells like cat piss or like an old person with no money. Economical, but also trendy. Look first hand, buy second hand. Keep the economy moving. The speakers below are banged up and worthless. The sneakers triumph over them. They're the star of the show here. Can I just buy the sad conquered Samaritan speakers? No way, officer! These aren't for sale. They're bad speakers. Low-fi socialist junk. But I need some speakers. Well, if you want them... On the one hand, these speakers are socialist garbage. On the other hand, you did buy the sneakers. So I don't really need them anymore. Okay, officer, they're yours for 50 cents. Great, perfect. The junk is yours, officer. Happy listening. Try not to hurt your ears with that Samaran garbage. Cleaning out the rooms. What if you didn't lose your memory? What if something in Martinez came and stored it all away for you to slowly open one box at a time so you can choose which parts to keep? Keep almost none of it. Only the flowers on the windowsill. Only the distant sound of a radio. Lose all the actors, the dark shadows. Leave only the still lifes, the blissful distant wash of waves. If everybody knew, you never did. She'll be coming soon. That is all. Uh, wake up in a new life by the seaside. Well, those are that's pretty good. Some nice bonuses there. The shine on these sunglasses lasts a lifetime, officer. 100% guaranteed. Everything's still cool here, officer. Still cool. Can I do any new checks with, uh, with that? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what to do. 
I mean, obviously I can do the Everart quest, but what if I don't want to do that? Am I just, you know, stuck with nothing to do then? Probably nothing else to say to her. Wasn't anything else in here, was there? A lorry stuck in the traffic jam. Yeah, I guess not. This must be the name of the Doom commercial area. Mm-hmm. An off-key melody starts playing after you ring the doorbell. Then a woman picks up the receiver. Kuno, please stop calling here. Grown-ups don't have time for your stupid game. She thinks you're the gremlin child. What would he say to this? Um, I'm not going to try to impersonate Kuno. Um, sorry, I was just trying random doorbells. I don't have anything important. Please don't do that. Doorbells are not toys, and this one isn't even working properly. Please don't call us again. Thank you. A single beep indicates that the line has gone dead. You ring the doorbell, but... No one answers. What an ominous name for a hair salon. Doesn't bode well for anyone's hair. All you hear is static, but no one answers the call. You ring the doorbell, but nothing happens. Looks like someone has melted half the plastic off with a lighter. The doorbell doesn't work anymore. <laughs> you hear static from the intercom speaker. It sounds as if someone has picked up the receiver but isn't saying anything. You can almost hear them breathe. Hello, is anyone there? Yes, hello. This is Trice and Penny and Electric. Have you come to place an order? She sounds almost antique. As if her voice was being played off an old wax cylinder. A receiver must not be working properly. Hold on, Tricentennial Electrics? I thought I was calling Slipstream SCA. Oh my god. The lieutenant exchanges a look with you. Sorry? It's a woman, and she knows you. Your heart beats faster. Who cares that you don't remember her? Just go along with it. No, something's wrong here. Are you sure she's talking to you? Uh... 
Do we know each other? Michelle, just please. Sounds like a ghost. Wind blows through your clothes and you feel detached from your surroundings. Inside the building, a cold memory hangs. Why did you even call? I don't understand. You've been gone for months. I thought you didn't care. <laughs> of course I care. It's just that I've been going through some tough time. A spot of static overrides her words. When she speaks again, it sounds like she's submerged. It's so nice. It's so nice to be able to finally again. Forget about what? She sounds like she's about to cry. The cold is deep under your skin, as if you were talking to someone who's a hundred years away. Somewhere inside the building, water is flooding the cellar floor. Hello? She doesn't answer. You said it was nice. What's so nice about forgetting? Silence. The only thing you can hear now is static and waves washing ashore on the bay. What just happened? Another seagull passes by. It's getting cold standing here, staring at the silent call box. I don't know what happened either. We should probably stop playing with this thing. Alright, it's a goodbye then. You press the number sign on the keypad that terminates the call. Twelve name cards on the call box read. Call him back. Whatever she says, it can't hurt you. You're a different person now. Stronger, healthier, and all right. Maybe not healthier, but it's a bonus that you've drunk so hard you can't remember any of your past relationships. Oblivion's the ace in your corner. Call her again. There's a light buzz as you press the doorbell, waiting for her to answer the call. It's cold outside, and you can hear the wind blowing into the speaker. A strange metallic taste fills your mouth as you stare at the intercom. There's the static again, whispering like a seashell pressed against the air. Yes, hello, this is Tricentennial Electric. Have you come to place an order? Hi, it's me again. I wanted to talk to you. Here come the bad vibes again. Relax. Distance yourself from it. What? It's you. My God. I didn't think I would hear your voice again. Why, wait, are you repeating your words? Michelle, just please. Why did you even call? I don't understand. You've been gone for months. I thought you didn't care. Is this some kind of joke? It doesn't matter what I say, you're just going to continue, right? The voice from the intercom doesn't answer, but you can hear her breathing. Wind blows into your microphone again, crackling and echoing in the box. Your hands are getting cold and your breathing becomes visible, forming small silvery puffs in the air. Is it over? Can we talk now? Ever since I came to work here, it's been... My mind's been wiped clean. 
really forget about you. And then it hits you. You're recording. She tries again not to cry, and still doesn't succeed completely. Her quiet sobs sound old and distant, as if her voice is being played off a wax cylinder. Yes, obviously. Go ahead, ancient recording, cry then. Her sound melts into the static from a long distance phone call. From time to time, you can hear people talking in the distance, but can't make out any words. This is where you hung up the call the last time, but the recording is still going. Keep listening. A phone rings in the office with an old fashioned chime and someone walks by in a pair of heels. The static is like a warm blanket wrapped around the sounds. Anyone there? No one replies, but the static grows stronger like rainfall. Then a female voice speaks out, completely different from the one before. Glorious and total somehow. Crawling inside your head. For 300 years I have been here. Volatile and luminous, made of sodium and rain. If you want me, you can find me on the beach. So... It was a recording trapped in the circuitry from some ancient tenant. This sometimes happens. Shall we conclude here? We have other mysteries to solve. Wait, a recording trapped in the circuitry? Mm-hmm. I don't have time to explain it to you right now. Maybe sometime later. Something weird just happened to me. Don't take this the wrong way, but during our short stint working together, something weird is almost always happening to you. Fair enough. That is true. Silence. No one's home at Fortress Accident. They have fell. Silence. No one answers the doorbell. Silence. No one answers your call. This button looks new, but someone has removed the name card. Nothing happens when you try to ring it. Hmm. This button looks new. I wouldn't be surprised if it hasn't been connected yet. Is it the dice makers? Maybe. Alright. Interesting little excursion. All right, get the hell out of here, Kim. I got stuff to do. <laughs> I see it's locked. Um, yeah, can you can you can you get out of here, Kim? Come on. I'm I'm a busy guy. Time for you to go to sleep. All right, time for me to turn in. See you later, Kim. It's getting cold this late in the night. Time to call it a day. Goodbye. Good night, officer. We'll meet. Yep, yep. Um. Waves are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. Simmer down. Simmer down, bastards. Uh, goodbye. Only an 8%. Wow, you really need to have a an impressive level of suggestion.
Yeah, I don't think that's going to do it. Waves are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. Simmer down. Simmer down, bastards. 28%, not bad. Not bad. Go talk to Classy. I was just thinking, what a nice evening it is for taking part in a murder investigation. Now that Kim isn't here, let's talk about Sunday night. Ah, uh, yes. The night before I saw you in the hallway and reminded you you're a police officer. Before you is only the room, the sound of the motor vehicle, steam in the bathroom, and darkness. Wow. Mythopoetically adequate stuff. She's a glib girl, but she liked the wording. Did you hear something Sunday night from my room? There was the usual ruckus. Loud disco music. Did I have any visitors? I can't say... Probably not. Sounded like you were flying solo. You mentioned loud disco music. Oh, yes. Various artists. Ostentatious orchestrations prime among them. Oh, that? Yeah. Whoa. The less said about OO, oh, oh, the better. OO oh, oh, were huge where I come from. I was very young then, of course. Like seven. Life gets hard, but we go on. Then, doesn't life get hard because we go on? Yeah, we go on, all right. I don't know about that. At around 2 o'clock, the disco stopped, and there was a change of pace. What happened? A slow, sad song started playing. Like organ music on repeat. That went on for quite a while. Some of that time, you were yelling along to it. What was I singing? That it doesn't matter anymore, and that we're alone now. It was difficult to tell. The song itself was very quiet and soft, but you sounded like a wounded boar, sir. It was hard to understand what you were singing on top of it. Then what happened? Then you started screaming and trashed the place. That's so me. What did I do? A window was smashed. The tape player, probably. The song stopped. And furniture, too. A real destructathon. There was screaming. Then I think you passed out. Anything else? There was. I think you screamed that you didn't want to be this type of animal anymore. I may have misheard, but it was sort of memorable. I went out afterwards. Everything was quiet by then around four or five, and that was it. 
She feeds herself another cigarette. Goodbye. Oh, I can do the mirror check again for some reason. All right. Why not? It's getting cold, this late in the night. Time to call it a day. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see your reflection in it. The expression fixed to your clean-shaven face. You're still not accustomed to it. I think I can get some more encyclopedia and I can light up a cigarette and whatnot. Too fast for facts. Okay. Just spark up inside the old shack. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see your reflection in it. The expression fixed to your clean-shaven face. You're still not accustomed to it. It belongs in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate, uncontested way of life for our species. Okay. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. Forget about ostentatious orchestrations. Forever show. Your city. That meant only one thing. Guillaume La Million. If it doesn't rhyme, you're not pronouncing it right. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music, in an open air, Boite de Nuit, somewhere in Revachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit, then he made the expression. So I adopted it, why? Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. 
Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. I feel the need to add a clicking sound when I make it. The click is used to spur on a horse. It also features heavily in Guillaume Lamillion's regional mega hit. Don't worry, your pretty little head. Sometimes you like to add finger pistols to the mix because unlike Guillaume Lemillion, you are a police officer. It's your nifty little way to say, I'm armed and dangerous. Good call. How long ago was the new? There is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression, looking good on you or anyone. Two decades, if the calendar is to be trusted, Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. Anything else like, who am I? Why did I become a cop? Why did I drink myself into oblivion? You have some understanding of the near history of Disco, plus the trivia you've picked up along the way. Episodic memory, however, remains in the dark. It may never return. You should prepare yourself for that. Does this have anything to do with ostentatious orchestrations? Not really. OO must have just stirred your mind. They're more like a disco rock band anyway. I guess that's it then. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. Okay. Um What do I need for this check? I can't remember. I guess it will show me in here. Electrochemistry. I think we can make that happen. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see your reflection in it. The expression fixed to your clean-shaven face. You're still not accustomed to it. Attempt to stop it. It's like something snaps in you. A nerve ending. A thought. A sadness. Your face in the mirror is suddenly clean of the leer that had distorted it for God knows how long. Just like that, it's over. The running gag that your life had become. A sad old man looks back at you. Good, good. Now I look more like myself in real life. Um... I think the 
breakfast is good. Let's get to bed. The bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. To bed. The bed underneath you is soft, if lumpy. Waves wash the sand underneath the hut, then grow distant to your ear. In the quiet hum of the organic heater, you fall asleep. Like a deftly cast fishing net, sleep pulls you out of the world and into its dark shore. The rough mesh chafes, tightening around you, it digs into your brain. Great, this is going to be really chill. How have things been going for you out there? Helped anyone lately? Saved anyone lately? Murdered anyone lately? This bastard isn't even listening to you. Because you know you are a murderer. A disco music listening psycho killer who offs poor people. And then forgets about it. Shut up, I just want to sleep. Hear that? Iceman wants to sleep. He doesn't care about killing people. That's nothing to him. Black water. Under the bridge. The thing he is really scared of. It's much, much worse than that. What is it? Don't tell him, sister. It's too bad. They're right. This is their function. To keep you from it. Why are you doing this? I just want to sleep. I can almost see the dark. We're trying to help you. All these processes, these tortures, voices and tremors are all just distractions, flares and countermeasures to keep you from the last dream. The worst of them all. The last dream? The last dream will be total annihilation. Cinders peeling off the fuselage. We won't be there to help you anymore, Harry. We will be dormant. You will be naked and alone. And the air will smell of apricots. Of hell. An ancient sadness, brother. Ten thousand years later. In front of the video rental. There is a warm breath on your face again. Everything is okay again. Everything is so okay can't wait. Your eyelids flutter open for a moment. When you close them again, you sense the light of the room around you. You're back. In two seconds, the alarm will ring. I have an alarm? The last thought in your head before waking is, maybe you shouldn't have seen that stained glass window in the church. Yes. You seem to be following me. Excuse me? 
What if I want to work the case alone? Detective, if I may be frank, you seem to be in a deranged state. You have trouble remembering things. You've misplaced your badge. I cannot let you act in the name of the RCM without supervision until you've regained control of your faculties. Hmm. Oh, so you're an unaccountable wreck who has to be supervised. You don't have to take this display of authority. You can disobey. But what if I need some me time? Some you time? This is a police investigation, not a journey of self-discovery. You'll still have your evenings to yourself. All right. A moment passes. The lieutenant glances at the sports watch on his wrist. Well, I mean... Great. It's a new day. And there's still just nothing to do. <laughs> um... Smoker on the balcony. Oh no, this this annoying glitch where it's saying that I can re redo checks when I cannot redo them. Looks like they're back. The rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. Yes, it does. Behind the pipe, the maintenance door rusted shut and half. Mm hmm. A few locusts trudge along the The trap is filled with dead and dying locusts. I really wish you could fast travel from anywhere. It's strange to me why they disallow that. Just dead and dying locusts. Alright, I guess we'll quickly see whether or not there's anything different. Anything new to do. Any new people in here? Looks like no. Why are you still in here, Gary? Always a pleasure to see an officer of the law. 
I mean, officers. Uh-huh. Cursory examination shows that not much has changed, so I don't really know what uh, I'm supposed to do other than things that I would like not to do. But I maybe they're not a choice. Anyway, uh, we'll stop it here. Very close to where we started, actually. Right in front of the whirling. And, uh, yeah. Back next time. Hopefully I can figure out how to get some skill points or something so that I can move on with the game. That'll be next time. Till then.